The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interest of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Keeping children interested in school is certainly an issue that affects not only the children, but their parents and teachers. Today we'll be visiting William Byrne Elementary School in Burnsville, Minnesota. We'll be talking with school media specialist Jane Paulson and resource teacher Bonnie Nyman. They'll be describing the Quest program, a program for high potential students. We'll talk to some of the students involved in the program and take a look at some of their projects. Jane and Bonnie, it's wonderful to be here at William Burns School in Burnsville. Just walking in that door, there's a real sense of excitement. It's a total learning environment, all the artwork on the walls and the, the sounds from the classroom. And we're here today to talk a little bit about your Quest program. Could you, you are a resource teacher, Bonnie, I understand, yes, not a classroom correct. teacher, mm -hmm. and Jane, you're the school media specialist, mm -hmm. and together the two of you are the coordinators for this special program. That's correct. Um, our Quest program is actually for grades 4, 5, and 6 here at Burns School. In fact, in all of Burnsville, we identify our children for this program in third grade, and then in fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade is when they're actually formally in the Quest program. Our Quest is, is our program for our high potential children. Uh, gifted and talented, every district has their own name for what this particular program is. For the most part, we have at Burn, um, it's a combination pull-out program and instructional program right within the classroom. Jane has a little bit of information as to how we separate that between the pull-out and the classroom. Okay, we're involved, as Bonnie said, in the pull-out program, but the classroom teacher is really involved in the curriculum-based part of the program. And that is a classroom teacher might modify her curriculum or the course content to uh, meet the needs of the high potential students. For instance, there might be a variety of different projects or activities that go on in the classroom that would meet the needs of the children. So we kind of work as a team. I mean, our classroom teachers here are marvelous and they do a lot of mm -hmm. um, activities, I think, to stimulate high potential students too. So as I said, we do kind of try to work together. The other part of the program is what we call the Quest or the Pull-Out Program, and that's the two of us design units trying to capitalize on the student's ability a little bit and maybe we can go into a little bit more depth and the children might have some choice in the program. And we try to, exp we might expand upon the curriculum but we also might offer something that is something that they've never been introduced to before mm -hmm. like oceanography or some other topic. Mm -hmm. So then the students work on <coughs> projects with you and do research. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They're learning how to use the library I assume. <laughs> right. And oh, we, and a lot. We, and we can talk to some of the students if you'd mm -hmm. like to, to hear what they think about the program. In fact, we're really interested in what you kids thought maybe was the most interesting thing or the best part of the Quest program. Mm -hmm. Today we have three fourth graders that would like to share a little bit about our Quest program and tell us maybe what their favorite part of the program is. Starting with Stacy Holland. Konnichiwa. Pat Fulton. Konnichiwa. And Corey Warner. Konnichiwa. Go ahead, kids. One of the favorite topics this year was studying Japanese culture. A favorite activity was origami. To do a good job in origami, you have to make precise folds and follow directions. This is an example of a giant crane. This year we had a woman come here named Kamiko Kasai. She taught us about a few things about Japan, like Japanese writing, cooking, and reading Japanese writing. We got to go into the teacher's lounge and <laughs> eat chicken teriyaki and rice balls wrapped in seaweed and crab salad. One of the things I noticed when I came into the school was all the white paper cranes hanging in your principal's office. Were you responsible for those? Yeah, yes. we, see, we, were, we set a goal to make a thousand cranes and we met it, I think we went a little bit over. Do you know a little bit about the story behind that? Why did we choose to do a thousand cranes? A thousand well, cranes means peace. So, and then 
after we made the thousand cranes, we hung them in the houses. Did you want to talk a little bit about your other study involving mammals? Oh uh, yeah, we um also did another unit that we liked. It was on Minnesota mammals, and we each picked a different animal and we studied it and did research on it. And later we took a field trip to the Minnesota Zoo and we al- gave reports on that animal. We also, each of us, made believe we're an animal and we did short skits for the younger grades to teach them a little bit about Can Minnesota tell, mammals. How did we do those skits that was a little bit different? Corey? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I think most of us pretended to like interview another person and the other person would be like the animal. Yeah. And what was our format for it? What did we use? We didn't just do skits, we did them. Um, like educational yeah. skits. And then video. Yeah, we, yeah. we did like, video. We put it, we threw in like things like how long the animal was, how much it weighed, and where it lived. Okay, you did a video production, which was nice because then that could be wheeled into the other rooms on the machine, and all the other grades could learn a little bit about Minnesota mammals. Two of our fifth graders are here today to tell you a little bit about the Quest program as well. We have Adam and Brian. And Adam and Brian, as we talked, they came up with a couple of their favorite, favorite units that they would like to talk about. So, Adam and Brian, why don't you take over and tell a little bit about what you liked. Okay, I like math logic. It was really challenging to the mind, and we oftentimes used wuzzles as warm-ups, and we used matrices to solve complicated word problems. And here's one of the word problems that we had. Um, This is learning in school. You can see the learners in school. That would be like an example of the wuzzles that we used mm-hmm. to kind of warm up our brains. Every day when we started, we always, the logic problems that they were doing, the math logic problems, are very complex. And so we always felt that each time when we started, even though they had been in school for most of the day, their brains needed a little warming up. So we did some of the fun little word wuzzles to kind of get their brains going. And they were favorites. After we went through some of those that I had already prepared or had found prepared for them, then they had to work on some and make up their own. And they truly enjoyed that. I think we could have had just a quest unit on wuzzles, couldn't we have? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, what were you like to talk to us about? Well, one of um, the uh, units that really had to make you think and um, use your creati- creativity was um, inventions, and in inventions, we had to make up a, an idea and then actually use our idea and make it too, and we to do that, we evaluated by doing other activities too, like we um, dropped eggs off the roof to see um, if they would break or not. Well, of course they were in packaging. Okay, and, and what was the idea behind that? Why did, why did we drop eggs off the roof? Well, just to um, kind of like see how, what creative thing you could make to kind of, or useful thing you could make to stop, could, to do a purpose, and that's kind of what inventions was about. Mm-hmm. You had to invent a package for that egg, didn't yeah. you? Do you guys remember some of the packages that people used? Yeah, well, um, one of the more successful packages was when a person took an egg, put it in toilet paper, put it in, um, uh, let's see, what did they do? They put it in tissue paper and cotton balls, and they put a parachute on it, and that worked. The one person just put cotton on it, and that didn't work. It splatted all over the ground. This was less successful. Okay, now tell us a little bit about your invention. What did you invent? I invented a, um, the spit stopper, and it was a rubber attachment to your toothbrush which would stop drool and toothpaste foam from covering your hand during <laughs> brushing. It's true. <laughs> and did it work? Yes, it worked. I used it every night till I lost it at home. Okay. Brian, as you were doing your uh, research for inventions, because you had to do some research, what kind of research did you have to do? Well, you know, we had to make an invention that wasn't, that wasn't already on the market already. And so I went to like stores like Target and um, Walgreens and stuff, and you look through the toothbrushes, and I'm sure there wasn't any there, and so, and that's what everyone did, and we really got a, some cool stuff. Okay, can you tell us about some of the other inventions? Do you remember some of them? Yeah, one person made a um, blanket that was Velcro to your bed, so it would fall off during the night. And Brian, we have that's that with us. Erin couldn't really be here today, but she left her invention, so maybe we can just show that. 
It's a slip no more covers. Right. She did a slip no more covers and put Velcro on it so that at night, let's see if we can get this loose, the blankets don't fall off the bed. Because her problem was that the covers yeah, slipped. It's and very so useful right. Thing. So she solved that problem by doing that. And uh, as you can see, did a wonderful job of putting together a model and really showed us how the invention could work. Excuse me. Anything else? Could you remember any other inventions, Frank? Oh boy. Oh, one person made a um, what is it? A portable garbage can, which is a little plastic dish that mm -hmm. you put garbage in with a garbage bag and a strap to put it on, and it's adjustable mm -hmm. too. The one I thought that was also very interesting, although this person did not ever do a model of it, was the little coin purse inside oh, the yeah. lunchbox, which mm -hmm. was very interesting. So many children bring money to school in their stolen. lunchboxes for milk or whatever, and it either gets lost or it gets stolen or something happens to it. Not usually stolen, but it's gone anyway when they go to use it. And so he came up with a little pocket that could be Velcroed inside the lunchbox, and that way the money would be safe inside, although his model never got made. so. Anything else this year that you can think of that's been fun for fifth grade that you've enjoyed that's really challenged your mind, as Adam said? Well, the other sixth graders are going to talk about it. Okay, so we'll let I the sixth graders. Their act. Okay, <laughs> we'll let the sixth graders talk. Also with us today are some sixth graders who are involved in Quest and have been in our Quest program for several years. We have Nikki, and Rachel, and Laura. And they are also going to tell you a little bit today about what they have liked about our Quest program. What were their favorite activities this year? Who's going first, girls? Well, we like dissection. Nikki and I were partners, or are partners in dissection. And we, in dissection, we learn about the frogs. And, well, they give us frogs. We dissect frogs. And we learn about the frogs' bodies and our bodies. And in the first session, we just got our frogs. and. We just kind of did like worksheets about them, um, about the anatomy and and like the insides and like named the organs and stuff of the frogs and found out where they were and like the similarities and differences between our bodies and the frogs' bodies. Um, in the second session of the dissection, we got to cut the frogs open and you know name the organs and stuff like that and. The knowledge that we'll get from the dissection, we'll, we will probably use in older grades in biology. Now, why do you think we're doing dissection in, in Quest? What do you think? Well, to give us, because most kids in sixth grade won't, I mean, don't get to dissect frogs, and because we're in Quest, we get to broaden our horizons okay. and dissect. Right. It's a little bit more for you to try. It kind of, as you say, expands your minds. It kind of gives you more experiences than you would have in the regular classroom. Okay, Laura, what were you going to talk, tell us about? I want to tell about Independent Research Project, which was a section of Quest that I was involved in this year. In Research Project, you get to choose your own subject, which is really nice since you don't get to do that very often in regular class classrooms. I chose the Mongolian Wild Horse because I am kind of horse crazy. I take any chance I could to study about horses. You get a lot of class time to work on it and you get to um, have a lot of trips to the school library. When you're done you share your project with other Quest students and you also get to share it with a younger grade that you want. Um, and that's really nice since instead of always being the student you get to be a teacher once in a while. And Laura you just took your project that you did on, on the Wild Horses to the State Fair, Science Fair, did you in Mankato. How was that? It was pretty nice. Um, I didn't do too well, but I didn't okay. do too you know, bad either. Okay, well, and it was a good experience for you, right? Okay. With the research that you did for your research project, where all did you have to go for research? You mentioned our school library. Where else did you have to go? I caught up the zoo and I went to the Do Dakota County Library. and. I use several of my books at home since I have a lot of horse books. Okay. So the research project really takes a lot of reading, doesn't it? So reading is, is high on the list of things you have to do for that. What else has happened this year in Quest, and I guess specifically thinking this year, that you really enjoyed? Before Christmas, what did we do? One of the units I know that most everybody enjoyed. I like Japanese cooking a lot. Okay. I don't remember much about it since it was so early in the year, but I really, really liked it. Okay. The eating part? <laughs> or the cooking part? The cooking part. <laughs> okay. 
we also did something right before Christmas, remember? We, we had a couple weeks straight when we came in, we did our video and computer program. Oh, the Voyage of the Mimi. Voyage of the Mimi, right. And we also did a little bit in, more in-depth this year on mm -hmm. the whales. Can you tell mm -hmm. them a little bit about that? Well, we had um, videos to watch from, I think it was PBS or something, and we watched the videos and it showed people going out and using their knowledge on uh, whales, and we watched that and learned stuff from that. And then we did um, we did computer games on the computer, and we learned about we had to stay on an island and stay alive for a year, and we had to keep the ecosystems balanced. Right. And how many people were successful? Were you? Um, yeah, I did one time. I stayed alive. Good for a whole year, which is really quite a challenge for them to have to balance the ecosystem and keep everything living, including themselves, for a whole year. Anything else, girls, that you would like to tell us? We did poems on whales, too. Yes, we had to did. make up poems about whales. Right, so we got a little bit of writing in mm -hmm. there as well. The Voyage of the Mimi is actually a fifth and a sixth grade program, and the students have uh, part of it in fifth grade when they get into the nav navigational skills, and they actually get to go out on a whaling vessel, and they're looking for whales and then are lost, and so they have to find the whaler. And then in sixth grade, they also go out on the same ship, but they are stranded and have to survive for a year. So it's really quite a challenge for them and very interesting. They enjoy it between the video programs and the computer games that they get to play. Chad and Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about the Quest activities this year, some that you've been involved in? Well, one of the favorite projects we were in was a unit called Building Bridges. In this project, we were put into groups that were picked by the teacher, and we had to make a, build a bridge out of toothpicks and glue. We had a budget of how much money we could use to buy toothpicks and glue and all that stuff, and we, we did, took a lot of planning to figure out what would make the strongest bridge. One of the things that you did not like about this activity was that I put you into groups, right? Yeah, yeah we couldn't pick our own groups, so we just had to go with whoever is in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And this was an activity activity that both fifth and sixth graders were involved in. Yeah. So we had some fifth grade students involved in this as well. And normally when you work in groups, who gets to choose the groups? We do. We do. <laughs> so this was a change, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. What happened after you had your materials, you decided how much you wanted to buy, where, where did you go then? Well, then we went to this, um, we call it some warehouse, some, some, some type of warehouse run, run by you and we just <laughs> right. we could buy our materials there. And we just had to glue them all together and hope that it make the strongest bridge. Mm -hmm. And it did. It did. What, what, how much weight did your bridge Our, hold? Almost 19 pounds. Okay. Do you want to tell how we broke those bridges? The whole activity was building the bridge. And then what did you do? We ended up... Well, on the last day, we took a bucket and hung it on the bridge. And then we set different weights in there and see which one held the most. And we went until it broke. Right. So after all of this work and all of these hours spent building the bridge, they ended up eventually breaking them. But it was a good activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our bridge, though, didn't break because they ran out of weights before our bridge broke. Right. I had only picked up enough, all the weights that I could find and had not picked up enough so that the bucket wouldn't hold the weights and we actually never did quite break your bridge. How much did yours hold, do you remember? Um, 8,250 grams. Right. Over that. Over that. We had to stop there because that was all the weights we had. That was the, all the weight that we had to put on. Anything else you can tell us about building bridges? What did it do? Besides just building your bridge, what did you have to do? You had to work as a team and you couldn't just be an individual or nothing would work. Right. And it was that was probably the most important part of it, wasn't it? Was working as a team. Anything yeah. else about Quest this year or other activities? I know the girls have talked about some things, but are, is there anything I else? I enjoyed the field trip to the paper yeah. place. Okay, tell us what, do you remember the name of the place? Um, Minnesota Center for? Book Arts. Book Arts, Book yeah. Arts, right. You can get to make your own paper mm -hmm. out of different color, mm -hmm. any color you want. Mm -hmm. Had anyone in our group ever been there before? No. No. When we plan field trips for Quest, we usually try and find a something within the metropolitan area that either the children have not been to before or like with the Walker or with the Institute of Art or the Science Museum it's a uh, new exhibit or something that the children have not been to so we try and expose them to something that's unique for them something a little different and the Minnesota Center for Book Arts allowed us to do that this year what else did you see there besides getting to make paper 
We got to see how they made books, and they had some really original books there. They only had hundreds of them, mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. hundred. What was probably your favorite of the unique ones that they showed? What did you like? I liked the pyramid one. Yeah, so did I. It was like a pyramid that you opened up, and it had different pages, and if you folded them a certain way, it, they would turn into, like, mountains, and so... They had some beautiful books. So the Minnesota Center for Book Arts, I guess, is for us anyway, was a wonderful resource to be able to take these children on a field trip. Anything else about Quest you'd like to t tell us? Not really. No. Now, how long have you covered. two been in Quest, in our Quest program at Bern? Well, since it started, yeah. I guess. Since okay. we could. Okay, since third grade when you were identified, yeah. you actually started in fourth grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were in uh, first kindergarten, first or second grade, Third grade, perhaps. Yeah. Were you pulled in for any other activities? Yeah, yeah. there's thing like omnibus or something like that. Mm -hmm. We're in. Mm -hmm. We try also to get children, um, both Mrs. Paulson and, and I, take children in to um, just kind of like enrichment group activities in first grade, second grade, and third grade, so that the children that the teachers identify as needing a little bit more in in an area, we can pull them in and work on them on a specific or special activity. We've talked a little bit about some of the various activities that the children have done in Quest this year. might be interesting now to hear from them and find out why do you like being in the Quest program? Does it offer you something special? What do you really like about the Quest program? Stacy? I like that you can do things that other kids in your class don't get to do. I just like being in the Quest program because you get to do things that you never really even thought about doing. I like it because you get to have fun when you're learning. I like it because in school it's some plus some. You learn things in school and then the Quest program teaches you something extra. I like the variety and the different activities that we do that are very much different from the activities in normal school. I like Quest program because it's more of, more of a challenge because um, I mean the other classes like there's like high reading and math classes I mean they teach you like challenging things but in the Quest program it's more challenging than what you would usually get in the classroom. I like how we got to choose what sessions we'd like to be in. I like the individual attention that you can get that you don't usually get in regular classrooms. I also like the Quest program because of the challenge and the variety of things that are extraordinary that you don't get to do in regular classes. I like the field trips and all the different things you normally don't, don't get to do in normal, cl normal classes. You have a real articulate group of children here, and I think a lot of the credit probably is due to the very fine teaching staff that they have with the two of you coordinating the program and also with the classroom teachers. Reading has come through as a real mm -hmm. component, of course, in the research that the students are doing and in everything that Quest involves. Do you have any special kind of a reading program or any way to help the children develop their, their written language or their... Well, skills. we are involved in process writing right now, and both Bonnie and I are free to, on occasion, go into the classroom and do enrichment things within the mm -hmm. reading group. So we do do a variety of activities in the reading rooms. Yes. We, we go into classrooms as well as pull students out, and that's one nice thing with our program, getting away from reading just a little bit here, but as we go into the classrooms, we're not only exposing our Quest students, but we're exposing that whole particular group of students to the activity. So it allows us to get more students involved than just our, our Quest students. And I think the key is more students involved. We do in our program service 7%. However, our philosophy here, the two of us, is that we do like mm -hmm. to revolve students in on occasion. For instance, if a child is gifted in mathematics and we're doing a mathematics unit, then we like to service that child according to his talent or ability. So. That doesn't mean the child would be with us in the core group all year, but he might come just for that particular unit. We try to meet individual needs if mm -hmm. we can in the program, as much as possible. That was kind of a little bird walk away from your reading question. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the things, a year ago, this year I did not do it with the students, but a year ago, uh, I took like blue books, you know, we used to have those blue books in college courses, and gave the students those, and for a year they had to write down the names of all of the books that they read, just for leisure, pleasure reading, not what was required within the school curriculum. 
I had one student who actually filled up two of them just by writing down titles and authors. So reading is, we stress it within our activities because what, many of the activities require a lot of reading. But because of the children and who they are, they also enjoy reading, most of them. And so reading just comes naturally. Right. And they do it as a part of their life. Reading is important, but we try to hit different areas. Like we like right. to have the sciences, mathematics, and reading. So we can include kids of a wide talent or ability area. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. reading, of course, is really important. Also, it's a wonderfully integrated program. And it sounds like it's a real challenge to the students who are involved and to you as teachers. Thank you to all the mm -hmm. students yes. who are with us today. Well, thank you. Thank We're you. happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bonnie Nyman, Jane Paulson, and the students in the Quest program at William Byrne Elementary School in Burnsville. Dancing Teepees, Poems of American Indian Youth is compiled by Virginia Driving Hawks Navy with art by Stephen Gamble. Virginia Navy is known for her other no Native American books, and Stephen Gamble is the Caldecott award-winning artist who has also dealt with Native American materials in his Where the Buffaloes Begin. The title is misleading. It makes you think that it's poems by Native American children and young adults. What it really is, though, is a collection of materials, poems, and chants from the oral tradition of the Native Americans, which means these are poems and materials that would have been heard by Native American youth as they grew up in the 19th century. They are very interesting in that they provide viewpoints on Native American society that you normally don't get from books with just a text presentation. For example, there is the poem, My Horse Fly Like a Bird, which is adapted from a Lakota warrior song. My horse fly like a bird to carry me far from the arrows of my enemies and I will tie red ribbons to your streaming hair, which emphasizes the importance of the horse to, a, to an Indian warrior. Another book story, The Four Corners of the Universe, which is a song from the Mescalero Apache, you will be running to the four corners of the universe, to where the land meets the big water, to where the sky meets the land, to the where the home of winter is, to the home of rain. Run, be strong, for you are the mother of a people. This poem was used in a young girl's coming of age ceremony, and it gives a very good idea of the position of women in Native American society. The illustrations by Stephen Gamel are beautiful. They're very muted, though, so they complement the poetry and do not detract attention from it. The artwork shows the influence of various styles of Native American art, and Gamble has researched the artwork as well as Snavy has in researching the various types of oral tradition. Although the book got reviews, starred reviews, and other noted reviews in a variety of the standard review sources, the age ranges mentioned very greatly. There were age ranges 6 to 9, 8 to 14. 9 to 14. The book looks to be of greatest use to children in the upper elementary to early junior high years. It contains many thoughtful poems and is a book to be shared with young people. Dancing Teepees by Virginia Driving Hawks Navy, illustrated by Stephen Gamble and reviewed by Jeff Gagner of the Southdale Area Library. Thanks for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library. 
in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency.